I would like to welcome Luciano Ratameo, who is a former journalist and full stack programmer. And he's going to explain something about Django to us, like how to go from a request to a response. Uh, welcome, Luciano. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah. So this, Good to be this here. seems to work. I'm happy. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's see if I have your screen. I can't see it at the moment yet. I I just shared, so it should be there in time soon. <laughs> okay, there we go. So there's yeah. there's a screen. Yes, you you you're watching yourself. So maybe you, <laughs> let's have your presentation first. Oh oh oh! Sorry about that. <laughs> Let me just. So you, this. yeah. So where are you joining us from? Uh, from Brazil. Uh, from Brazil. Awesome. Yeah. There, there's a really big community here, so yeah, good to represent. <laughs> yes, that, that's then. Then uh, you could still be in your bedtime pajamas then, because <laughs> no, I've been wearing these for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm mostly a hundred percent of the time on pajamas, so. Uh, <laughs> so this, this, <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, let's get let's go to business. Uh, I'm looking forward to this. So please explain to us how the requests and responses work in Django. Cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm Luciano Hatamero, as as he said. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about uh, the request, uh, the parts of the request and the response cycle on Django, uh, in which you can intervene and do uh, specific things. Uh, so yeah, for those who don't know me, um, the map is a little bit blurry. Some somewhat, I don't know why. Uh, I'm a senior Python JS dev at Lab Codes. Uh, I work mostly with front end, but uh, I'm, I go to all Python conventions because I love the Python community. Uh, as I said, it's really big in, in, here in Brazil. It, there's a lot of people. Um, the conventions are beautiful. Um, so bad we, we, well, this is the best thing uh, we can do right now, so uh, let's let's go. I've been working with Django for almost a decade now. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think that it's been so long, uh, but yeah. Uh, and about lab codes where I work, uh, we uh, do design and development, uh, mostly with Python, Django, and JS React, but we have a, a, some uh, projects in different languages. Um, and we already made talks on PyCon, DjangoCon, EU, EuroPython. There are a lot of places. Um, so yeah, just go to labgos.com.br if you want to uh, talk with us. So uh, first disclaimer, this talk used to be longer. Uh, it used to be about 40, 45 minutes. So I won't be able to talk much about Django itself here. I'm going to talk more about the parts of the request cycle in which you can do stuff. Uh, and if you have any questions or just want to hang out um, on web frameworks um, on the channel on Discord, so uh, just ping me there and I can uh, answer the questions later. <clears throat> so why have I made this talk? Um, I, uh, for the most time I worked with Django, I never knew that much uh, about how it processes a request, how it returns a response. It's always a bit hazy. It's kind of hard to find good available information about this as well. It, there's not like a graph or anything. Uh, I didn't have the time to make one, but I, I hope it's, uh, uh, it's, the information is uh, good here. So, um, and this is the kind of thing that you won't use that much, but it's good to, to know if something comes up and you need to, to do something like this. So yeah. Uh, before talking about Django, we need to talk a little bit about, uh, about how your server processes a request. So if someone does like whatever.com and presses enter, um, the request goes from the browser to the server. The server mostly has like an outer layer uh, uh, with Nginx, Apache or something. Um, this isn't Python related, so it, it forwards the request to a Python application server. Uh, we mostly use Unicorn, uh, but there are a lot of them. Um, and then after this, uh, this layer of, of uh, request workers um, is, is done with their job, they forward the request to, uh, as, a, uh, as a WSGI object to Django. We're going to talk about Django here, so a little bit about WSGI. Um, so 
how about Django, right? Um, Django, uh, well, we're mostly used to writing stuff on views. If, if we have any logic, any uh, domain, log domain logic, we do it on the view or the model level. Um, but there are a lot of places that, uh, that you can fiddle around with Django. Uh, when the because it's like a two-way uh, street, right? The request arrives on Django, uh, it goes to the view, and then back. So on the way in, it passes through an, an WSGI app or handler or whatever you want to call it, uh, then passes through some Django code, then middlewares, uh, then some Django code, then the views. And on the way out, uh, it passes again through the middlewares, uh, then through context processors, if you have like a template rendering or something, most, most of the time you do. And then it just does whatever it needs to get the response out. So we're gonna talk about these specific steps. They're really key for doing specific stuff. Um, so on the way in, the first part that uh, the request hits on your, your Django app is the WSGI handler. Uh, it's like really the outer layer. It, it's like right on the gateway. Well, it's called the web server gateway interface. So it's, it's the interface on the gateway, right? Um, but what is exactly WSGI? Uh, WSGI is web server gateway interface. It's like a standard, uh, 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 a way to a uh, pack uh, uh, an object, a request object, and a response uh, handler uh, for all uh, Python frameworks. So all Python frameworks only need to uh, know about uh, how to deal with one specific type of object um, instead of each uh, framework needing to implement that part that, that just parses the request. Uh, so yeah, it's, it exists for a long time now, and it's, uh, it's so that Django, Flask, Bottle, everyone can just uh, deal with the same kind of request object. Uh, oh, the, the images aren't here. Oh, it's here now. Um, well, Django, of course, uh, has its own WSGI handler. Uh, it lives on Django core handlers WSGI. I'm not going to talk much about this code uh, because it's a lot to, to unpack here, but uh, I'm, I'm going to just show you a, a couple of things. Uh, you see this is a handler, this is a class, but it's a callable class because it has a def call here, and it receives environ and start response. This comes straight from the uh, the outer layer, the unicorn layer, for example, uh, this environ here has all the information about the request and this start response is a function um, that you call to specifically, to specifically handle, well, here's the response that I want to, to give to the browser. So, um, so two things here, this request equals self.request class environ this is just Django uh, picking up this object, this environ object, which is kind of the request object, but really in, in, in a most raw state. <clears throat> and it envelops in a class uh, that represents the Django request class, um, more beautified and whatever. Uh, and then it returns, it, it does response equals self.get response with the request. So this self.get response is like the whole Django. This, since this is the outer shell, uh, this get response here calls everything. Middlewares, Django code, views, whatever. It calls everything. Uh, so uh, why would we change the WSGI handler or app? Um, exactly because they allow these eager responses without going through Django because you have the raw data from the request there available to you. So you can just, for example, if you don't want to, uh, to serve your app for a specific country or to a specific IP or something, of course you can do that on, for example, the Nginx layer 
really on the outside. Uh, but if, if there's something that you want to do, or if it's something that you want to test, for example, it's Python code, so it's, it's easier to, to deal with. Um, so yeah, they allow eager responses without going through Django, without wasting all that computational power. Uh, so they prevent unnecessary processing sometimes, if you write things right, uh, and they give you access to the raw data from the request. This is not like a beautiful Django request object. This is like a lot of plain data, a lot of plain strings. Um, so yeah, uh, they're useful for this corner cases, uh, but they are corner cases, but when you need to do that, it's like really performant if you just intercept the request right at the gateway. Um, so all the projects, when you do like Django admin, start project, your project name, right? It creates like settings.py, URLs. And one of the things it creates is this uh, WSGI.py um, uh, object here, uh, 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 file here. Uh, this is where it lives. Um, and if you want to change it, you can just or change this, uh, uh, this module to do whatever you want. Or there is a specific key on, uh, on the settings.py file that you can just, uh, it's, I think it's WSGI application. You can just point it to another Python module and it's good to go. Um, yeah, so that's for the WSGI. So after the WSGI, you go through some Django code on the way in uh, and you hit middlewares. Middlewares are, are called middlewares because they're in the middle, right? They're between the views and the gate uh, of your app. So uh, they're kind of like windows between the request cycle and the response. It, it's called on the response as well, spoiler. Um, uh, before and after your views, so that you can interfere with that request response flow to do whatever. Um, they're executed for every processed request, so they're good and they're bad, depending on what you're doing. Um, a good example on the usefulness of the middlewares and how they're implemented is uh, the Django contrib of middleware. This is the authentication middleware for Django. This is like really important stuff, right? Um, so what it does, uh, first you see this authentication middleware here. This, this is the class that's, that, that defines the middleware and it has one method called process request. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, methods that you can, uh, you can use uh, and it, each, uh, each one is called on a different part of the request cycle. So um, this one specifically is called always on the way in uh, because it, it's processing the request, not the response. Uh, so what it does is it, it puts on this, it appends to the request object, a user attribute, which at the end of the day is like the database user if the user is logged in, for example. Um, so you see, it's really useful because you always want the user. If, if, if you're making a Django app, you're probably gonna need to deal with user. Uh, so uh, this authentication middleware already appends to the request that user. So why would we change or, or add middlewares exactly to uh, access this, uh, these common objects? So let's say you're doing an e-commerce and you want always to have the shopping cart or whatever, um, you can write a middleware to do exactly this, so, uh, but for the, the shopping cart, for example. Uh, the user is the biggest example because it's, it's obvious that everyone wants the user. Um, uh, and for specific request manipulations or integrations, so for logging, for error catching, uh, for uh, communicating with, for example, if something goes wrong, you send data to Sentry or you send an email to an admin or something, middlewares are good for this kind of thing uh, because they're right in the middle uh, in and way out of the request. So if something goes wrong, probably middlewares are going to catch it. Um, and this is a little bit vague, 
but I just wanted to, to put this here because uh, all their vehicle that runs in the middle. So if you want to sing before the view or after the view, uh, this is the place to do it. Um, but they have a couple of issues. Uh, the first big thing you need to be aware is that they are executed for every single request. So uh, it's a lot of processing. Um, and they are called between layers of Django code. So if, if, you, don't, if you want to respond eagerly, for example, uh, I would probably go with the WSGI handler instead of using middlewares because they, they already wasted a little bit of computational power to get there. Uh, and they are called in a specific order. This is something that people kind of forget. It, it, well, it is on the docs, but uh, it's, it's, I think it could be intuitive or not, depending on, on how you think about it. Because they are called, uh, their list of middlewares on settings.py, uh, and they're called, on the way in, they're called from top to bottom, and on the response, they're called from the bottom to the top. It's kind of weird. Um, yeah, so, you have the WSGI, you have the middlewares, you have the view, you do stuff on the view, you hit the middlewares on the way back again, and if, you want, if you're answering like a template uh, response, you have the context processors as well. They're like the, one of the last things to be called before the response is done. Um, they're really useful for really specific cases because what they do is they, add, uh, they allow adding variables to the templates context so for example, if you have a really redundant object, you always want, want it to be there and not exactly on the view level, but on the template level. Uh, this is the, the part that you, that you need to uh, intervene. Uh, and they are really simple. They are pure functions. Uh, most of the ones that I wrote have like three lines of code uh, because all they do is receive, receive is a function that receives a request and returns a dictionary and that's it. Um, they work really well together with middlewares as well because middlewares make th could make things available to the view, um, but sometimes it's not on the format that you want to deal with on the template, so you can just make a counterpart. And, and the example is exactly that counterpart for the authentication middleware. This is uh, on Django Contrib auth context processors. Uh, and it's exactly the counterpart to this uh, middleware here, this authentication middleware. Um, because what it does is uh, the middleware puts an user if it's there, but on the template level, you don't want to always ask, well, is there a request.user? before you, you just asking, well, is this a super admin? Is this a staff user? Is the user logged in? You don't want to have that check of, it, of if there is a request.user before you do anything. So what this does is it's, it checks if uh, the request has an user attribute. This user attribute was populated there on the middleware if there was a user. Uh, if so, uh, it, it creates a new variable uh, called user with that uh, content. But if not, it, it puts in, instead uh, an anonymous user, an instance of anonymous, anonymous user. Sorry, that's, that's hard. Um, and this anonymous user here has all of the attributes and methods that we used to uh, use on the template level, like is staff, is logged in, I mean, is authenticated or uh, is super admin. Uh, so uh, you can make all the checks that you want without having to do a, an if every time. So it's, it's really useful for that. And it, and it answers, uh, it, it has the permissions for that user as well if, if you need the permissions there on the template. So you see that's really simple and straightforward to implement, but it's really useful if you have that specific type of need. Um, and yeah, uh, why would we use them? Uh, they're for redundant uh, objects that you need on the template level or for fallback variables. Uh, so for example, the request.user, if the request.user is not there, you put an anonymous user instead. So that's a fallback variable um, to be used on the template. It, it, it's only available for the template. Um, 
and they prevent repetitive view code because, for example, if in all of your views you need a specific object on the context, instead of putting a decorator on the view or instead of uh, needing to write tests for that specific context, you uh, so you simplify the, the testing as well. You can just write a context processor and test it. They are really simple, pure functions, so they're easy to test. Um, so yeah, just a quick recap. Uh, change your WSGI app to eagerly handle and respond requests. They're really useful for that, not that much for anything else. Uh, and it's kind of a fiddly part of your Django app to, to touch. Uh, and use middlewares for mandatory request response processing or custom manipulations or integration. So for logging, for appending uh, data that needs to be there, uh, this kind of things. But be aware that it, it's uh, CPU intensive because it runs on every request response. Uh, and create context processors to prevent repetitive code inside your views and makes making testing them easier. So yeah, uh, I know it was a lot, but that's about it. I'm going to be on the um, uh, Web Frameworks Discord and ping me on Luciano Hatamero on Twitter if, if you want to talk with me. So yeah, that's it. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the talk. And let's see, um, yeah, I'll remove the screen share from this so that we can share the next oh. one. And uh, I saw a cat and I think in your description you said you're a big fan of cat gifts. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love kitten gifts? It's oh, they are, they are awesome. <laughs> Okay, so this uh, this worked really well, considering that we are on almost uh, the opposite sides of the world, and yeah. that's that's what makes Pyjamas so interesting to see. Okay, the whole Python community can just come together for this and be there for a full day. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, as you said, you're going to be on the Discord. So mm -hmm. if somebody else uh, has questions. Uh, I think somebody here complained about that uh, you should be speaking Portuguese instead of English. So that person, <laughs> yes. uh, that person uh, could go to the Discord and just ask you to do the whole thing again in Portuguese. Oh, um, I could do that anytime. Just call me. Okay. <laughs> no Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Bye. And um, at this point, then, uh, we would normally play a, a, a short message from our sponsor. And we've had some technical difficulties with uh, these clips. But I will not give up. I'll try this again once more. And the good thing about this is, of course, that uh, we will now uh, have very short clips and not the long version of the clip. So uh, it, it, it's not all bad. So um, I'm already preparing. Uh